body odor. What's up everyone, we're back. I'm Dr. Shaw. I'm Dr. Maxfield. And welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology, and that also includes body odor. So today we're gonna to be talking about a term called bromhydrosis. What causes it? How do you treat it? I think many of you are gonna be surprised because I was surprised that there's actually really good ways to treat bromhydrosis without actually even having to mask the smell. All things body odor, here we go. Here we go. This has been one of the most difficult videos to shoot, so bear with us here. We're actually shooting it over again. I had to find a lens. There's a lot that goes into these videos behind the we scenes. We walked the streets of Miami just looking for a camera shop for this video. So please appreciate this video. We have spent hours upon hours just getting to this point. And I had to walk, and so now I have brome hydrosis from walking through the streets right now. So in order to understand what causes body odor? We need to explain the different types of sweat glands that exist in the body. The main two types of sweat glands is acrine sweat glands, and those are all over the body. They're the ones when you're sweating profusely, your body is producing a lot of this very liquidy sweat. And then you have something called apocrine glands. And apocrine glands are the ones that actually cause your body odor to occur. And these are in areas like the armpits, the groin, around the areola and in the eyelid margins. And these apricot sweat glands, although present at birth, they do become a little bit quiescent or quieter. And then of course, around puberty through hormonal influence, they really become active again. And this happens to coincide with BO, body odor or bromhydrosis. So along with that, what is causing the actual odor? So little known fact, it's the bacteria on our skin that cleaves this into smelly small substances. Your body produces odorless apocrine sweat. And then the bacteria that's living on your skin, like Staph epidermidis, corny bacterium, actually convert this into a very malodorous substance. So therefore, if we know what's causing it, we know how to treat it, which means that if you can get rid of the bacteria, stop the sweat, or mask the smell, those are the ways that you're gonna treat bromhydrosis. Now, there are a group of people that actually do not produce body odor. So if you have a mutation in the ABCC11 gene, that transporter that pushes apricot sweat onto the skin is not there. And therefore you don't produce apricot sweat and therefore the bacteria can't convert it into an odorous substance. And this is very common in the East Asian population. So there are people who will say, I don't smell, I don't have body odor, I just can't make body odor. And that actually may be true. This was true within my family. My mom's dad, from Indonesia, he was one of those people. He never wore deodorant, I can tell you for a fact, he never smelled, and now we know why. You can also produce from your eccrine sweat glands, the separate sweat glands. Sometimes your body can secrete odors from foods that you eat, like garlic and asparagus, but body odor that we're traditionally used to smelling when we hear the word body odor is from the apricot sweat that we described earlier. So let's talk about different ways that you can treat it. Now, you can start off with just cleansing the area. Now, just simple cleansers, we always say to clean your hot spots. A lot of people, especially if you have really dry skin, should focus more on the oily glands of the skin, which are your armpits, like I said, your groin, breast area. Those are the areas that you wanna focus your cleansers on. Now, you can just use a traditional cleanser, but if you really do have malodor, and I'll tell you from my personal experience and from my experience of my patients, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on this hack. The hack is to use cleansers that actually have antimicrobial agents in them. So really good examples would be using a 4% benzoyl peroxide cleanser, not the 10%, that's probably gonna be a little bit too irritating for those hot spots, but that will decolonize the bacteria on the skin. Or you can use a chlorhexidine cleanser at 2%. This is gonna be something like HibaCleanse. And if you do this, you decolonize the bacteria that's actually turning that sweat into an odor. So that's for some people is a complete solve for them. This takes us to the treatment options. So you have your deodorant antiperspirant. It's often combined, which makes it confusing, but your antiperspirants, these physically block and plug your sweat glands. So whether it's apocrine or equine sweat, these will actually stop the sweat from reaching the surface, thereby decreasing the bacterial conversion to smell. Then you have your deodorants. Now these don't stop the sweat, but they actually decrease the smell, either through killing the bacteria, like your glycolic acid that I know all of you love and behold, it's wonderful, or just simply masking it with a fragrance. Now let's talk about some specific product recommendations here. So with those antiperspirants that are actually blocking the sweat glands and keeping you from sweating, these are usually gonna be aluminum, most commonly, by far the most common, and then secondarily, you'll see some magnesium-based antiperspirants as well. Aluminum has gotten some heat 
for two reasons. One, some people think it caused tons of different types of problems in the body from cancer to dementia. That has not been proven. I personally use them, but this is gonna be a personal preference for you. If this is something that you don't wanna use, I completely understand that. For me, it's something that I don't think it's been validated at this point, so I continue to use those. The second reason why aluminum can be controversial is because it was actually the 2022 allergen of the year. So you know we're big fans of the allergen of the year. Some people actually do get quite a bit of irritation and allergy from aluminum-based deodorants. Now, if it's not causing you any problems, there's no reason for you not to use these. Banda cream is a really good option. It's an aluminum-based deodorant. It's fragrance-free, and it's really just gonna block those sweat glands. And then counterplay for the aluminum is magnesium. This is getting more popular just as a reaction from the general public. And I have tried a lot of magnesium deodorants. My main issue with some of them is it's less aesthetic. Like, it, you really have to work these deodorants in to be effective and to get them on. They're kind of clunky and that can be irritating itself. But the Think Sport ones, I like those, they have their own scents to them. Then you have the Biosense one, which I really liked. I don't know if this still exists. I know they're kind of reworking some of their products, but I loved their magnesium deodorant, um, but they are becoming much more common. We'll show you a couple other examples here too. Next, let's talk about some deodorant recs. Now, there are two ways to approach deodorants like Dr. Maxfield said. You could either try to mask it, which is basically just like using perfume in the armpits, or you could try to use something that's actually gonna decolonize the bacteria by making it inhospitable for the bacteria to exist there. So these aren't traditional antimicrobial agents, but there's something that makes it less hospitable. So this would be something like alpha hydroxy acid base. This is something like your glycolic acid hack that you often see where people say it does get rid of odor. That's because the pH and other ingredients in it make it inhospitable to the bacteria that exist there. Something like this would be like the Necessaire deodorant. This one has alpha hydroxy acids in it. It's also fragrance free. Now, if you have very sensitive armpits, this could be irritating because what you're doing is you're occluding that acid underneath the skin, but these are formulated so that they can be for those sensitive skin areas. Right, and then of course, beyond the deodorants that kill bacteria, you have just fragrance. I mean, you could spray perfume in your armpit for all I care. I mean, the, it's not going to do anything for you, except maybe irritate it, but functionally be the same. And speaking of just deodorants, fragrance deodorant, okay, where does Axe fall into this conversation? So your traditional Axe sprays that were very popular when I was a teenager, are your traditional deodorant sprays that had no antiperspirant benefits, right? You would spray them all over the body, they'd show them in the commercial, you'd spray it and a bunch of girls would run your direction. I don't know if you remember these, it never happened. I used to use this after soccer practice all the time. So I'd light myself up in Axe and I remember getting approached in the hallway where this guy comes up to me and he goes, why do you smell like this? And I'm like, it's Axe. And he's like, it smells like Axe. And it was a specific type of axe called voodoo. And I was like, it's voodoo. And he's like, it smells like doo-doo. And so the, the story always resonates in my head. But I, I thought axe was cool, but that's your traditional deodorant that just is a spray that is essentially masking the smell by creating another smell that's supposed to be better. It's horrible. It's so, so strong. My roommate back in college used to use it and the whole place just, it's so pungent. It'll overpower any physiologic, human, synthetic, bioprocess scent, it's too much. Axe, I hate Axe. But that takes us kind of to the traditional deodorants because most will combine your antiperspirant and your deodorant together. Some examples of these are like Dove Plus Care, it's just who I've worked with before. They have aluminum based, they have non-aluminum based, but again, combining antiperspirant and deodorant together. And this is by far the largest category, it's the antiperspirant that also has some type of fragrance in it that's gonna basically perfumize your armpits at the same time as blocking that sweat. So another one that has a lot of clinical studies on is the secret clinical antiperspirant. This boasts a 72 hour blocking of sweat. I haven't tried that out over that period of time, but I can tell you it's extremely effective in at least blocking sweat for the 24 hour period that I'm usually not reapplying for. This claim is so over the top. So we, I, we've talked about this behind the scenes, we've talked about it before. It's not that it doesn't work. I'm not questioning the validity of the 72 hour antiperspirant claim because they're not the only one with this claim. My beef with this sort of thing is practically who is doing this? Who is relying on their deodorant to get them through 72 hours of hard living? If possible, I recommend you shower the next day and don't put that claim to the test. I think it's over the top. That's all I'm saying. Have you ever, you know how after you apply deodorant and you try to wash your armpits afterwards, yes. there's like almost like a chalky sort of feeling. Mm -hmm. So there's this idea that this like aluminum is sticking around for longer than anticipated. And I actually do think mm -hmm. it works, but you're right. Like how often do you need to reapply? Now, another hack you'll commonly see, and him and I will debate about this, is if you apply your antiperspirants at night, 
they're more effective because it gives it the opportunity to actually occlude those sweat ducts a little bit better in order to prevent the sweating. You could do it, you could not do it. I personally just apply my antiperspirants in the morning because that's when I shower. But if you wanted them to be really effective and this is something that was really bothering you, then I would say the clinical studies do validate the claim that it is more effective if you apply it at night. That's fair. So this is like one of those things where I, you know, I see my colleagues talk about putting it on and I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yes, that is probably optimal. Real life though, you will never catch me putting it on before I go to bed, but that's just because I do things in the morning. I work out in the morning, I shower in the morning, and practically it makes no sense to put on deodorant just for when you're sleeping if you're going to do things like shower and exercise the next day. So, you know, whatever. If you wanna be perfect, perfect, God bless put your deodorant on at night. So we'll do an entire other video on hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating. Now this is more difficult to treat. It can be debilitating for a lot of different people. And this is just excessive sweating, sometimes all over the body, sometimes just localized. So watch out for that video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. We'll see you next time. So your body actually produces odorless apricot sweat. Ap apricot. <laughs> apricot, apric, apricot, apricot sweat, apric, ap, apricot. <laughs>